Hello everybody, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. Today's tutorial is inspired by my Hardy paints. So we are going to be painting a beautiful daisy landscape, I guess. Um, so the first thing I want to do, oh, my paintbrush is not rinsed. So the first thing I want to do, or that we want to do, is uh, create our sky. So it's going to be like a pink, pink purple nude eggshell color. Um, so I'm going to start off with pink. And we want to concentrate it to like maybe the a little above the halfway point. I have taped my borders nicely. You can choose to do the same if you want. So then I'm gonna pick up some nude and fade it in to the pink. Just a light, light color. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It's okay if you go like beyond the halfway point because we're gonna be like covering it up with darker colors anyway, so it's okay. And actually, now that I think of it, I should make this darker because when it dries, it's going to be much lighter. And I want mine to be dark. Well, not dark, but I want it to be actually visible to the viewer. And if you'd like, you can add some like cloudy formations as well. My background is a tad bit wet right now, so if I were to add clouds, it would not look very good. I think I'm going to try to do it anyways. Um, let's see, I'm going to just switch to a smaller brush. I'm going to pick up that nude. But it's quite, uh, I'm going to pick up nude and a pink as well. And then, yeah, see, it's still quite wet. So I'm not going to get the desired effect that I want. That's all right, the way that it is like that. So I just mix the pink with an existing blue that I already had on my palette. And 
and you can place your cloud you don't even have to have clouds um but because our sky is so like eggshell and pale and whatnot i do want to add something to it just to give it um just to give the viewer something to look at when they look at the sky. Okay. I'm okay with that. Like, I don't know, we shouldn't focus too much on the sky because all the detail is going to happen down below with all the daisies. So we should just uh, let this completely dry before we move on to the next step. Okay, so for this next part, we're going to start creating our horizon, roughly. Um, so I'm going to take more of like an earthy green not a forest green but it's kind of it has a little bit of yellow tint in it um and i'm gonna paint like because it should have been a little bit higher our horizon and it's okay because we're painting over this that's why i didn't care so much about where the, my sky ended but I do want it to be a little bit higher up, so I'm just going like this. I'm gonna have it sloping down a tad bit. And then going up like this. That should be good. And then just underneath that to kind of give it the illusion of a shadow or whatever um, I'm going to put like a slightly darker green just below it fade into it almost you don't have like I'm just being very loose with this um, it doesn't really matter too much something like that I would have liked this to be even darker actually on the bottom uh, do 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 so we could pick up some black to darken that. Just a tad on the bottom. Okay, I think I'm okay with that. So the next part, like technically we should let this dry because we're kind of building layer upon layer here. Um, but I'm so impatient, I don't wanna wait for that to dry. What I'm going to do instead is work from the bottom upwards a little bit. So I'm gonna take that really dark green that had the black mixed into it that we used for this bottom portion and I'm gonna just paint it down below now the reference 
like the inspiration that I have for this painting. It's in a uh, portrait position, whereas I'm doing it in landscape. So I, I'm working on a much more compressed um, area here. So it's almost black there, as you can see. And then I'm just going to lighten it as I move upwards. And then it's almost going to go into like a, a lime green, but I do want it to have a yellow, like maintain that yellow tint. That's not quite yellow, that's more blue. I want it to be nice and bright. I think I'm gonna forego this other layer that we have here. So if I put that in, then we're not gonna... Hmm. Sorry guys, I'm just thinking out loud here. And this is why this should be dry. Because if I touch it, then it's going to bleed into it, and I don't want it to do that. So I'm trying to avoid that, clearly. But I don't want there to be a white gap, so I think it's, okay, clearly it's sufficiently dry. And it's not bleeding into it. Very good. Okay. Very nice. Um, now, I want the black to come up a little bit more. Or just at least have a more gradual transition to that lighter green. So that's what I was adding there. Okay, very good. So I'm gonna let this dry, or I'm gonna blow dry that um, before we move on to the next step. Okay, so this should be dry. Um, what I'm gonna take, I'm taking my size one right now. I might switch paint brushes to a bigger one, but what we are going to do is take black and mix it with green, so we have a nice dark green. Um, so that's what I'm just doing now behind the scenes here. And we're gonna create like this shrubby tree effect. So at our horizon line essentially. So I'm gonna have, it's just gonna be on top of what we painted and you can overlap it a little bit and that's fine um yeah i am going to switch to the bigger brush because otherwise that would take a very long time with the smaller one i might just like i'll do the bulk with the bigger brush and then i'll go back and touch it up with the smaller brush for details we'll see how it goes But you don't have to, you know, be hyper specific here. So I want it to dip here. So it's going to go down like this that's going to be the thinnest point and then it's going to go back up um so my trees on either side are going to slope inwards
So I just picked up some pure green that I'm plopping on top, although I'm going to mix a little bit of black into it because that it wasn't quite the contrast that I was going for. So I just switched to my smaller brush for the detail details of the trees. Like it's not very detailed though. Like as you can see, the background is supposed to be a lot more abstract since we are going to be focusing on what we're going to paint in the foreground, which is going to make this whole thing come together hopefully really nicely. Um, I was really impressed. I don't know if you will see this, will have seen this tutorial already or it's, if it's going to come after this one, but I did this one um, with these beautiful baby blue flowers poking through the foreground and it turned out so, so nice and it wouldn't have been possible if I used my previous palette because the, the colors just were not that opaque in that palette. Um, it's crazy what I worked with for three years, what I built this channel off of, those, those watercolor paints. Um, but these ones are just, they're a game changer for sure. Like I, I'm actually excited to paint again with these because painting when you've been doing it for so many years, like every single week you need to release tutorials. Um, painting becomes a little bit of a chore. Um, but this new palette kind of, it's reviving. It makes me want to paint just for myself. I haven't painted just for myself in a very long time. Whenever I paint, it's for a tutorial. So that looks quite nice, I would say. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, let's see, what are we going to do next? So now I got to create the grass strands everywhere. And we are going to be using um, like nice bright colors for these grass strands. There is this, so my bathroom window is open. I don't know if you can hear the birds, but every so often this one bird goes off and it sounds like ski, 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 ski. And I'm trying to figure out what bird makes that sound. It's slightly annoying, but also slightly, uh, it's interesting. Like there was, the most annoying sound that I've ever heard from a bird, maybe not ever, but a very annoying common sound uh, that I heard, I was wondering like, what bird makes that sound? It must be such an ugly bird. And it was a blue jay. Blue jays make horrible sounds. So anyways, I'm taking a yellow here. And I'm just going to start painting on my grasses. So this this one isn't going to work, this size one. I do need to switch to, I'm going to try my double zero, but I think that might be also too big. Um, I do need a little bit more control. Oh, actually, this one will work. I don't really like that I used yellow there. I should stick to the beautiful lime green that I have, which actually looks almost exactly like the yellow. <laughs> so the reason why I wanted to make the the bottom darker, even darker than it is now, is because I want those grassy strands to show through. Maybe I should try the... It's like a chalky color that comes in this palette. Or I guess you would call it eggshell. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. 
try that. Maybe that will... It's so fun trying all of these colors. Okay, the thing is... Like, as much as this would probably work, it's too blue to be grass. So I don't think I'm actually going to be able to use that chalky one. But maybe I will mix some yellow and... Ooh, that creates like a highlighter color. Sorry, you don't really see what's going on behind the scenes here, but... Such a cool palette. Oh, did you hear the, I don't know if, I don't think my phone's sensitive enough to have heard that, but that bird went off again. Ski, 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 ski. So with these strands, we're basically going to be painting on a lot of strands here. So like you can make them all different sizes and they can start from different points uh, on your paper. Um, just kind of do whatever you'd like, whatever fills in the quickest, because we're painting a lot of these strands, so, you know, if you're very, um, finicky with your grass, this is going to take you a very long time. And if you want to take a long time, then by all means, but... This is my last painting for July. I don't know if it'll be the last upload of July, but I paint a month at a time. So this is my last one for my batch painting. And uh, I don't want to spend a long time on it. Although when a painting goes really well, like it's it's everything's kind of working out it gives you a lot more incentive to paint it's much more fun to paint because it looks really nice while you're painting it obviously if it if it didn't look nice then you probably wouldn't want to continue on and that's why i'm always like and i know it's very probably discouraging to keep painting something that you think looks really bad like is not working out the way you want or whatever but those are actually the paintings that i encourage you to just keep going with because um so many times i've had it happen where it looked really bad while i was painting it i was very discouraged and then it all came together at the end. And that has happened too many times for me to count. So don't don't give up. Don't stop your painting even when it looks horrible to you. I've had paintings that I thought were so ugly. I hated them and then my husband looked at them and was like oh wow like that's amazing but I've also had the opposite where I thought a painting was amazing and my husband like he never says something that he doesn't like something but he I can tell because he just looks at it and smiles <laughs> and he doesn't really say very much about it uh so I know that he you know is not necessarily fond of a certain painting when he does that. Um, and yeah, there have been paintings where I I absolutely loved a painting and he just smiled and was like, oh, that's nice. 
So, I guess the moral of the story is everybody's got their own preferences. I'm getting a little impatient with the painting the strands of grass so what I have resorted to doing is making them some of them much thicker and then they seem to just like fill up a little bit more space uh, so I I think I'm going to do that a little bit more. That's good enough. Okay. What we're going to do now is paint our beautiful daisies or white flowers, whatever the heck you want them to be. Um, these daisies are hopefully what is going to make this whole thing come together, but I'm going to blow dry this so that it's completely dry uh, before we do that. Okay, so I'm going to try using white watercolor in this palette for this part, but I might just resort to using white acrylic paint if it's not opaque enough. Um, so we're just going to be painting daisies but it looks good to me sometimes when it dries it's it's lighter so I'm just gonna you know not get my hopes up until it's dry and I'm gonna use one paintbrush for the whites and then one for the yellow part. So I have another one. We can add the stems later, by the way. Or like you can obviously paint it however you want. But I'm gonna just try and do a few and then we can paint the stems after. So in my opinion, this final step where we add the daisies, this is what's going to make this whole thing really come together, come alive. But it is going to require a lot of patience. to paint all of these individual petals, right? And the closer that these daisies are to the viewer, the bigger that you want to paint them. So the ones in the fore, like most in the foreground, so most down, I guess you could say, those are going to be the biggest daisies and then they're gonna, you know, turn into just dots in the background like I'm literally gonna go like this in the background So if your watercolors are not this opaque, by all means, use white acrylic paint to achieve the, the exact same thing. I might even switch to white acrylic paint just because it's easier. Because I don't have to keep like, with this white watercolor, I really have to lay it on I can't water it down too much 
or it won't um, it won't be as opaque. And I found that it was easier to just uh, like paint several of the white part of the flower first and then just go back with the yellow later. So out of curiosity, I'm going to just see what the white acrylic paint will look like because I already have some here from a previous painting and I am using my watercolor brush which I don't recommend. Uh, I've ruined a few brushes by using them for acrylic paint so it is a lot more opaque and visible obviously since it's acrylic paint so I'm just gonna keep going with this I don't want to use up all my white watercolor for all of these tiny details when I can just use the acrylic paint And like I said before, as you move further into the background, make your daisies a little bit smaller to show distance. And you can have them coming up really high as well. Overlapping the horizon. There's lots of options. You could even mix in more colorful flowers. So I'm just going to start dotting <laughs> to make it look like there's so many in the background that we can't even see all of the individual details of them. Okay, so I've got I think all of the daisies that I want, so I'm just going to go ahead and plop in those yellow centers. Ooh, I overdid it on... Oh no! What are the chances? I had blue watercolor on my finger. Ugh. That is so frustrating when that happens. 
Oh, and if I do this, I'm gonna, oh, what a shame. What an absolute shame. Let's try and save this. Okay, I saved it mostly. That's so frustrating. Just gonna go over it again. I'm just adding some yellow dots as well in between the white ones. So they look like abstract flowers. Okay, and then the last thing, maybe, maybe it's the last thing that we wanna do is add the, the stems of these guys. So you can take black or like a dark green with black, whatever you want for the stems. And we're just going to, I have to be very careful not to smudge anything here. And you're just going to attach your flowers or your stems to your flowers. And I think that adds a really nice touch. So I'm using my size uh, double zero to apply these stems. But you can use whatever works for you. And you don't have to do all of them. Just kind of do as many as you want until you're happy with uh, what it looks like. I just, I like it because it's a nice contrast and it makes the white flowers, the daisies, whatever they are, look a lot less like they're floating. I'm just trying to be mindful to like not overlap everything, overlap the stems over other flowers to make it look a little more realistic looking. Do daisies have like flower, um, leaves coming off the, the petals. I don't know if they do, but I'm going to add them anyway. Try not to smudge anything here. Like that, because that'll, that'll add something to this painting. Make it look a little more complete, I think. Oh, I hear a mosquito and I see it now. That mosquito will not be living for too much longer. Okay, I like that. I'm glad that I chose to add these leaves because it does add to the painting. Um, it, it just gives it a little more, something more to grab onto. Because before it was, these flowers were just kind of floating. They didn't really have a purpose. And now I feel like it's, uh, there's more volume.
and they're sort of peeking through in certain areas and whatnot, so I, I really like it. Now I'm just painting floating leaves. <laughs> Okay, I think, oh, I really like that. I'm so glad we added those. That really completes the painting. I think I'm really, I'm happy with it now. Um, you could add birds in the sky, but I feel like I do that every single time the sky is empty. So we're just going to leave it the way it is and peel that tape off. And we've got ourselves, I'll take this off, a beautiful painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please let me know what you think. If you did, comment down below your thoughts. Um, hit like on this video and I will see you in the next tutorial.